I was um, always a little bit more conscious about like what I was eating, but you know, it was nowhere near to the way that I changed my diet after having the experience of uh, living abroad in Italy, which really opened my eyes to you know the polarity between mm -hmm. the population there and the food there and what I'd always kind of uh, learned mm -hmm. throughout what it took to be big and strong and competitive as a football player. Which and was what? It was obviously, you know, whey protein shakes and lots of meat and mm -hmm. dairy and all that stuff, right? And that was the most calorically dense food, right? And that was also, there's like this stigma with that, that, you know, you have to be, you know, meat really and, and is what makes you big and strong and whey protein is what makes you big and strong. Um, and so that was always kind of what we had been sold, you know, and Completely. you, you know, started to realize and I did later when I had to continue to eat more, um, you know, I just didn't feel good after I would eat, I would be fatigued, I just heartburn, gut problems, you know, and just I think you learn to deal with a lot of that stuff just yep. kind of as an athlete you tough it out or whatever it's just kind of part of what goes along with the the territory but in retrospect you're like geez like had i known what i know now had i eaten been yeah i could have still eaten a ton of calories but if i would have changed the fuel source to be you know much cleaner not eat all these inflammatory foods and who knows like mm -hmm. how much more of a freak athlete i could have been how you know, quicker the recovery probably would have been had I been putting the right fuel in my body all along. Mm -hmm. Now, have you have you um, stayed in? This was in the what mid aughts that you were a football player. Yeah, so oh one through oh six uh, at Berkeley, and then oh six through oh nine, basically um, the Here NFL, in and then Italy. Yeah. So, have you been in touch with any of your friends who were football players when you were playing, and are they still eating that way? And how are they? Yeah, so yeah. I just <laughs> I just uh, took a, a guy's trip to Big Sky, Montana. Um, you know, one of the guys was kind of coordinating everything. We had like a chef come in and all that, and they knew I had like specific requirements and all that, right? <laughs> so Crazy like plant-based My special guy. menu and all right. that. But we had really good conversations because we did some skiing, and so you know, you're on the chairlift and stuff, yeah. and um, they're definitely interested because I they're feeling the long-term effects of that now, right? It's manifesting in their physical appearance and their energy levels and mm -hmm. just overall health and wellness. So they're definitely intrigued, but I think the biggest challenge and the, the challenge I personally faced is the change in the psychology and looking at food differently. It's really, when I looked at food as a as fuel right and you right. can either have high octane high performance fuel that makes you feel more energized that basically contributes to everything you want to get out of life or food that slows you down makes you lethargic makes you inflamed bloated put on weight you know those yeah. <laughs> those things start yeah. to catch up yeah. to you <laughs> the older you get especially when you don't change those eating be eating behaviors and habits which is I think the most challenging thing to do just because it's been ingrained in you in you for so long that you just are accustomed to eating a certain way it's mm -hmm. tough to change that mm -hmm. habit it no takes doubt. time yeah so. what was your aha journey or maybe it was an aha moment I, you know everybody's different um but what had you start to look behind closed doors and peel back the layers on what you were eating and how it was actually affecting how you feel. Imagine that, right? And then potentially affecting how your body is going to be as, as, as we all age and whether disease is going to come in or not or what, what, what happened? Yeah, so for me, it was more of a gradual transition, mm -hmm. a gradual process. There's a lot of, you know, just end of one experimentation, trial and error, mm -hmm. and just really looking for, and this was, you know, 10, 15 years ago before, you know, the plant-based movement is what it is today. Um, so really just trying a lot of that stuff um, personally, but it was really when I was living in Italy that I saw the difference between the population. You know, you didn't see obesity the way that it is here, especially if you spend any time in the Midwest no. or the South. Okay. It's pretty alarming, right? And there, you know, and the 90-year-old uh, grandmas are out there walking to the grocery store every day. They're getting their food. They're walking back home. They're cooking every day. Even, you know, when I would go to the store and get, like, produce or anything like that, I, I would notice it would perish in a pretty short amount of time, whereas, you know, when I was shopping here, you know, 
stuff would last for like three weeks or a month. So it's just scratching like, your head on that. Wait, one. Yeah, Wait something's minute. not right here, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. And so, um, and I just didn't need to be 240 plus pounds anymore. So it was really about how do I. You this know, was after you were transform. playing. For, you you were playing with the Doves in Bologna. Yeah, I was or, playing, yeah. but I was again playing both sides of the ball. Uh, so I wasn't playing fullback. I was right. running back, and I was safety, and I was like all over the field, okay. kind of like I was back in high school. And there's no way I could have done that at the weight that I was, and just mm-hmm. you know physically, I wasn't totally happy with you know my body image at 240 plus pounds, huh. and just like everything hurt right oh and, really yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, joints and everything, everything that moved was hurt. that because yeah. of your diet which was inflammatory as you said or was it because it just was too much was it muscle or fat on you so it was definitely both it was more muscle more fat mm-hmm. um and i think you know obviously the diet only compounded that right the inflammatory uh when you say inflammatory it. i think maybe our audience would like to know what you mean by inflammatory like what foods are inflammatory so yeah. dairy to start, obviously. Um, I think you know one thing that we have to be careful of when we talk about diet and nutrition is not to speak too broadly, because um, I think mm. where we're going is it's becoming more specific, right? A lot of times you know, we just say, okay, meat's bad, or you know certain types of food are bad, but mm. you need to kind of look go one step further and it's really about okay how is that you know produced how's it grown how's it harvested right because you know let's say um grain or something that's full of glyphosate and other stuff Ugh. isn't any healthier than you know some other types of food that might be better off right so there's a lot of things that can be uh inflammatory and you know the main ones are going to be sugar, dairy, mm-hmm. refined oils, and mm-hmm. so I really and the was, chemicals that they spray on them. Exactly, I mean, those are yeah, just all the like pesticides lethal. and herbicides yeah. and everything else, right? So um, you know it takes a lot of due diligence and and going that one step further. A lot of times, stuff if it's in a package, you know it's already you know red flags should be up because. How much do you really know about, you know, the farmer or whatever's on yeah. the, you know, downstream of that? Um, and so that over time for me has been where I've continued to to learn and just look to, okay, what is in our food? Hey, folks. Okay. Back by very popular demand is our plant-powered plate fridge magnet, which you are going to receive for free if you leave us a rating and a review on whatever platform you're listening to this podcast on. So here are the details. Just write your quick review. Does not need to be long. Does not need to be a whole story. Just be honest and speak from the heart. Then take a quick screenshot of the review you wrote and email it to us at podcast at switchforgood.org. That's podcast at switchforgood.org and include your mailing address so we can send you a power plate. We are doing this because the more reviews we garner, the higher we go in search results, which means more folks will learn about our podcast. So the power is in your hands. Leave us a review and zoom, zoom, your power plate arrives at your doorstep. So thank you so much for tuning in today. If we helped you in any way, then click the subscribe button and let's keep hanging out together. We have so much more to share with you. And if you need more information on actually making the switch for good, please visit us at switchforgood.org for loads of info. And you can subscribe to our mailing list where you will receive all sorts of super cool gifts, discount codes to our very fave dairy-free products, and a lifetime of powerful health tips. So join us on the journey to switch for good. This is the future.